welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a parallax effect. If you've seen some of the websites, let's say when you scroll down, random particles starts moving, the photos start to move random directions, it still feels quite nice because there is a lot of movement and kind of like directional movement. This is what we're going to try to do in action in order to simulate that in your prototypes. Now, as you can see, I have this prototype or this actual sketch mock-up which is static at the moment. I have a few layers of let's say snowballs on top, I have a few layers of snowflakes on top and I also have like a really big photo which I want to move as well. And an idea here is that we're gonna go ahead and recreate this sketch file from static to actual. Now one thing to note before we start is that you need to kind of structure your let's say design files in a more tactical way, meaning you have to separate the objects into different layers and kind of group them into chunks where let's say certain objects would move into one direction, other objects in the other, so that you don't end up with thousands of different directional movements because it's not gonna only confuse you as a designer who has to sort it out, but also the end user because the motion is gonna be too much. So let's go ahead and just take this design and try to experiment and see what we come up with in this next video. So here we go, I'm mostly done. I just need to drag in a couple of layers for let's see snowflakes and flares and all that jazz. But firstly, I wanna go step by step and animate the image. As you can see, I have this big mountainous terrain type of image it looks pretty good so usually what you see in parallax website let me just preview and tell you exactly what i mean is that the images are usually under some sort of bands or color breaks like this as you can see it looks pretty good so far and what we're gonna do next is we're gonna tell it then let's see on scroll to not only scroll this section down but also scroll and move the image slightly to let's say to the bottom or to the up. In interactions, if you deselect everything, you can add a new interaction and say, let's say on scroll down, which is our direction we wanna do. And I'm gonna say move and select our image. Now our image, I already made it a dynamic panel. So just right click on that image if you have, make it a dynamic panel, give it a name. I just name it BG so you know exactly what it is. And now I'm able to, let's say, move by, I don't know, let's say two pixels vertically. Now, this is the simplest way to do so. It's not gonna be smooth or anything, but I'm gonna show you exactly how to make it a bit smoother. Let's just preview so you know exactly what's going on. So I told it just on every time I scroll down to move it by down by 1.5 pixels. As you can see, it's moving slightly, but it's not, not great. So we could even say, I don't know, three pixels, let's say, or even maybe minus three. So it goes up as we scroll down. Let's do so. As you can see, you can always increase that. So let's say you could even give it maybe minus five or so, so it goes up a little bit more. But again, as usual, play with those values around. You can always do so. So you can see the content goes up a little bit and it moves up. Now, another way to do so, I'm just gonna drag it a little bit more so it's a bit more obvious, is by using functions. Now. This function button allows us to insert custom function values and attach custom function values. And you're gonna see it in a lot of cases, so it doesn't apply only to parallax effects, let's say. I would just open it, and as you, you're gonna find your default value minus five there, you can just delete that and insert variable or function. This button is gonna open a panel where you can select one of the predefined values, which actually is gonna pick out of a preview browser, like let's say a height of a window open, a width of a window open, agent, um, any math mathematical functions or values you can also use. What we can select and what's immediately would work in this case is window scroll Y. 
because we're already scrolling it by y coordinates, by y axis. Might as well use that method. And based on your mouse scroll, we can attach a value and maybe divide it and make it much more smoother. So let me show you how it works. Let's say if I select the, this window scroll y function, I can, let's say, divide it by maybe two or so. So let's say if my scroll is 50 pixels, we're going to move the image 25 pixels or so. So let's try that out. And also we want to, of course, move it up, meaning we need to keep the minus value so that it takes out the value up and then moves the image up, right? As you can see, that function value remains in the Y axis value. And if I preview the prototype, just like so, and if I scroll down, as you can see, our image is moving up and it's moving way too much way too much it just flew out so we can go back a little bit and make it a little bit more maybe less or so so let's say by four or so and again you don't have to stick to the functions you can give it a certain value but it's always interesting to work a little bit deeper and attach the value of what the user agent is and by agent i mean browser mobile phone uh, desktop device or whatever it is so here, let's say scroll down. That looks much, much better. As you can see, the image still disappeared, but it definitely looked much better than it used to. So I'm going to edit again last time probably and just maybe going to increase it by let's do eight. So we are doubling and doubling and doubling. And that should actually give us a bit more leeway. As you can see, the image is moving on its own. And then we have different bit. So it's pretty good. Since I moved the image out of the window, I'm just going to give this text a bit different color. So it's visible once the image is out. And let's preview again, just to you know exactly what I mean. As you can see, that image of the mountains is moving up. And then we go to a different section, which is dark. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? That's how you do a simple parallax effect. Now what you would want to do with that interaction is just make a copy or you could add a new interaction, let's say, and scroll up. So we actually, what happens if you scroll up, the text is gonna be invisible. That explore the wilderness area is gonna be white because the image just flew out. So we would want to reverse the logic and I'm just gonna copy the move option from above and just say plus in the function. So we go back to it exactly the same way, like so. And let's preview it. As you can see, we have two statements. One cracks it up on scroll down, another one is gonna bring it down. So let's view it. Boom, load it. We scroll down, everything is great. And now if we scroll up, the image is back and it's not as straightforward, of course. We might want to adjust the values here. So maybe do it a little bit less or so maybe four, like so. Because again, it also depends on scroll sensitivity and how much, how much actually we walk through. But as you can see, the mountains move up and then they move back down like so pretty damn good if you ask me now the last bit just again play with it play with all those values play with functions especially because it's really interesting what you can actually pick up out of prototype and what you can use and use the maths as well try to divide it multiply it you know add something and so forth just do the tr just explore experiment that's the most important bit i'm gonna copy in the last bit from our sketch which I hid, and that was the snowballs. And I'm probably gonna invert the direction. So instead of them going up, we're gonna go down, just like snowballs would do. So I'm gonna go ahead and convert them into a dynamic panel and call it snowballs. And I'm gonna say to the same scroll down thing, I can just attach another target and pick the snowballs and I can use exactly the same function as I used before. 
I could just literally write it down just by looking at it. I didn't have to select it. So, and I'm gonna just move it, let's say much slower than the other one, like real snow, like so. And then I'm gonna select another target. So what happens when you scroll up? And I'm gonna insert that function back again. But now I'm gonna invert it. And as a lesson, I'm gonna double it, let's say. Let's see what happens then, like so. And now if we preview one last time, as you can see, everything is loaded in. The mountains are going up, the snowflakes are going down. And if we scroll back up, we get everything back up. So it works pretty nicely. Different objects are moving in different directions, meaningfully, and that's most important bit. Um, if you like this video, as usual, leave a like, subscribe to this channel. If you have any questions, leave them down below. And as per usual, stay tuned for more material and I'll see you next time.